Welcome to this episode of Star Wars Declassified, where we look into different facts and stories revolving around the Star Wars canon universe and lore. On this episode of Star Wars Declassified, we'll be looking into the reason how the tiny Rebel Alliance was able to defeat the enormous Galactic Empire after the destruction of the second Death Star. As it's a common question, because when you think about it, how the Rebels could ever really win when the Empire still held control for a majority of the galaxy. Well, there are several reasons for this. First and foremost, the Rebels only won the battle and not the war when taking down the Death Star. The Empire was still very much around, a bit in a more fragmented form, and started to face major problems. As let's remember that the Death Star was supposed to ensure Imperial dominance, especially after Palpatine dissolved the Senate and Fear was supposed to keep the star systems in line. The annihilation of Alderaan was horrifying, but the destruction of the Death Star soon after inspired countless others to join the rebellion after renewed hope and desire for vengeance against the Empire. Afterwards, victories by the rebels through intel leaks, espionage, and guerrilla warfare allowed them to destabilize the Empire and wear them down. This as a result also introduced the power vacuum. As of no obvious leader, people will always fight over on who it should be, and isolated factions will side on on who they view to be the most stable government. With the Empire now decapitated, it didn't take long for the Alliance to restore the Republic to seem as the best contender for galactic sovereignty. So with the loss of the two Sith Lords that were keeping the regime together, the power vacuum left open within the Empire began to tear it apart. With Moffs, Generals, and all different leaders left bickering and competing for control, no one was able to rise over the fighting and successfully able to unite everyone as Palpatine and Vader had. Gallius Rax, an officer who was a confidant of Palpatine, came the closest to being the face of the Empire post the Battle of Endor but even he was unable to convince every Imperial group to follow under him, and his secret work on sabotaging other Imperial leaders only brought more distrust within the remains of the Empire, which is exactly what the Rebels capitalized on. Using the growing loss of confidence that many had after the Empire's embarrassing losses and mistrust amongst the leadership, all leading up to that point to wear them down and take control. Those left to command in the Empire all had their own ambitions and ideas for revenge, isolating themselves in different remnant groups which in the end only allowed the rebels an easier time in combating them. While other Imperial sides followed the contingency plan known as Operation Cinder, created by Emperor Palpatine, which saw hurting the Imperials themselves as punishment for their failure in defending him. During all of this, the galaxy became unified under the Rebel Alliance banner, fighting against splinter factions and unorganized messes of military remnants of the Empire. Even those large oppositions, such as the Jakku Remnant, were still unable to defeat the new might of the Rebels. It's actually ironic, as the start of the Galactic Civil War, it was the Rebellion who was made up of small cells, who fought independently from each other. And by the end of the war, it was now the Rebellion united as one fighting body against a fractured Empire. And that's how they won. The Rebellion, now known as the New Republic, had the unity, leadership, and the support from the majority of the star systems to go up against the Imperial Remnants, which were spread around in different parts of the galaxy, each following a different plan in mind. One of those Imperial Remnants, the Quilahan Nebula Imperial Remnant, ended up succeeding as it fled to the unknown regions and ended up becoming the First Order. However, the other remnants weren't as lucky, and while the First Order hid in the unknown regions, the rest of the Imperial remnants were slowly picked off by the New Republic. Those left remaining either signed the Galactic Concordance, which officially ended hostilities between the New Republic and the Galactic Empire, which saw most of the Imperials surrender and thus ending whatever was left of Palpatine's great galactic empire. While those who rejected the peace treaty continued an unwinnable fight, eventually isolating themselves deep in the galaxy only to be forgotten by the Republic. 
Now, just like the original trilogy reflected so much of that of the Second World War, Star Wars continued to do the same afterwards with tons of real-life empires having suffered the same fate as that of the Galactic Empire. For example, the Romans, Mongols, Ottomans, British, French, and the Soviets all broke up and fragmented eventually, usually out of the resentment of the people they conquered and the desire for self-rule. But I think that just about covers everything on why the Galactic Empire, despite its massive size, was eventually able to lose out to the Rebel Alliance after the Battle of Endor. And that'll do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and share it, along with subscribing to the channel to not only support it, but keep up with Star Wars news, gaming, and canon lore released every week. And consider following me on Twitter and Facebook to never miss out on the latest Star Wars related content. And if you want to support the channel, do check out our Patreon page. Along if you still want to continue the conversation, join us on the official Silo Discord server. Thanks for watching and may the Force be with you.